Welcome to the Passive Income Podcast. I'm your host, Dividend Dave. Please give a thumbs up for the Christmas tree set. And please be sure to join the Passive Income Posse by clicking that subscribe button below. I have so many incredible upcoming guests you will not want to miss. So please be sure to subscribe. And speaking of incredible guests, please welcome to this episode of the Passive Income Podcast, Eric. Hi, nice to see you, Dave. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, so if you just want to, I guess, give yourself a brief intro. I should have said that in, in before we started recording. A uh, brief intro. I know you're also Canadian. I think you're in Ontario as well. So we're probably going to be talking a lot about uh, the Canadian market and other things. But yeah, just yeah. go ahead and give yourself a, a bit of an intro. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm from Ottawa. Been living here for about, ooh, I don't know, 40 years now. Uh, originally from Montreal. But I uh, went to school here, grew up here, friends here, family here, everything here. And right. uh, there's, there's a couple of other great podcasters here. Like, I don't know if you know uh, Mark from uh, My Own Advisor, Mark Seed. He's, he's another guy uh, you should definitely have on. And he's in the Ottawa area and he he knows his stuff, man. I think I have him scheduled in January. I've, I, I And again, huge shout out to all. One, all the past podcast guests who have been willing to come mm-hmm. on and spend an hour or so of their time with me. And yep. and huge shout out to everybody who is like, it's just been an amazing response. I've only launched this podcast just under, just over two months ago. And the amount of people that have been willing to come on and spend time with me has been absolutely amazing. And like I said, I, I think I would have him scheduled in January. I'll have to double check my calendar, but I, yeah. I definitely know, as you know, I, I've been DMing a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sliding sure. into those DMs saying, hey, want to be a guest? And it's yeah, been that, just... that one. And I'm looking forward to uh, Dividend John. He He's the guy I really want to hear you talk to. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people are definitely. So you may have seen my tweet where I, I was like, I did not know authors were going to send me copies of their books. It's, he yeah. sent me an advanced copy of his book. I read it last Sunday. Great book, a great read. So highly recommended there. And yeah, that's going to be um, a, a, a great episode as well. Yep. Sorry looking for him. Looking at his book too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no worries. So yeah, let's just get into talking about some of the different uh, sectors, different uh, companies that you like, anything that you don't like. Again, obviously, this is not financial advice. We're just two guys talking. Yep. And um, I, I, I go ahead, start off. What sector would you like to talk about? And, and I'll throw it out there, like, uh, you know, REITs, banks, energy, yeah, uh, I, yeah, telecoms, I used to be, anywhere you want to start. Go for it. Yeah, I used to be like uh, a lot of the guys that are on on uh, DivTwit and FinTwit. Uh, where I had uh, individual stocks, and that, that's kind of the methodology that I that I used to use up until about um, probably earlier this year, like the start of the year. I came across um, a, a Facebook group called Passive Income Investing, and uh, this is one that your uh, pe- people that listen to this podcast should check out. Uh, it's uh, Adrian and his wife uh, Erica, and. Uh, they they have a different methodology of um, dividend investing. They're all about the passive income as opposed to uh, dividend growth. They sacrifice a little bit of growth, but they always get uh, maximum monthly income. And that and that's where I, I found out about DFN and and a few of the other ones that I'm into. So instead of having uh, individual uh, stocks themselves, uh, I use uh, a few ETFs and some split corps. Yeah, right, and. Like I mentioned before we started recording, you are the one that turned me on to DFN, and I, I I've started a small position there, and you know it. I like it; it's good. I I am I do look at that yield and go, oh wow, is that yield sustainable? It's a sixteen or seventeen percent yield. Yep. You may have seen the past episode with uh, Rusty where I told him about a sixteen or seventeen percent yield, and he was like, how is that possible? Any yep. of the companies that they own that they hold have a 
have a 16 yeah. or 17. I'm like, no, they're all like normal 5%. Yeah. Right? So, so I think the way a lot of these split corps work and a lot of the uh, high yielding ETFs is they, they have like a covered call overlay on top of them and, and they use a bit of leverage, right? So it's, it's not just the dividends themselves. They, they have other, other ways of uh, adding income on top of the dividend yield itself. And that's, and that's why they have such large yields. As for DFN, uh, like I've said many times, I've tweeted it out lots of times. They've been paying that that 10 cents for 18 years. They've never missed a beat. Uh, four four times during, like at the start of COVID in 2020 is the only time they uh, stopped paying. And aside from that, uh, the beat goes on. These guys, they, they just don't miss. So 18 when years, like what can you say about 18 like years? When they stopped paying, was like just for one month or two months or how long? It was did they stop uh, four, 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 four in a row. So when oh. everybody around the same time where everybody else stopped paying their dividends as well, like all the major companies stopped paying, like everybody thought the world was coming to an end. So <laughs> no, nobody paid anymore. Uh, they, they like everybody else, uh, stopped paying for a little while. And then uh, once they, you know, once everybody found out it wasn't as bad as we thought, the banks didn't crumble. They were as strong as ever. Uh, the life codes, because DFN is basically made up of uh, the big six, a few life yeah. codes, and a couple of uh, major uh, oil uh, oil producers. So the, these guys never stopped paying. So DFN went right back on and, you know, started paying again. Yeah, which is great because obviously, you know, a $7 or I think it's seven seventy, maybe seven eighty yep. a share. Mm -hmm. And you're getting ten cents monthly. Yep. That's yep. an incredible return. That's yeah, massive. Like basically, all, all of all of everything in my portfolio pays uh, over over ten percent. I, I, they're all made up of high yielders, but ones that have paid for years, years and years, just like DFN, and they continue to pay. That's why wow, I kind of switched around my strategy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, that's why I recommend a lot of people should look at that Facebook group, Passive Income Investing, and, and listen to what the guy says. He, he it, it changed my mind uh, completely instead right. of instead of buying individual stocks. A lot wow. of people won't agree with that because I, I know a lot of people on the board uh, on DevTwit, they, they love their individual companies, yeah. uh, as did I used to because I've been investing for a very long time. But uh, I, I really appreciate this strategy. It, it's a, it's a, for me at least, it's a much better balanced and uh, completely diversified. Yeah, wow. And I guess just to add to that, when you look at what DFN actually holds, like you said, mm -hmm. all six Canadian banks, I believe, mm -hmm. if, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they have both Bell and Telus, Sun Life and Manulife, and as you mentioned, yep. uh, some of the oil and gas sector, the energy sector as well. So, yeah, you know, these are all. Great what they company. actually hold is great mm -hmm. and then like you said you know they're using these covered calls and why not to increase uh, that uh, yield uh, on a monthly mm -hmm. basis yep and yep. so like i said in one of my tweets i think I, it might have been a reply tweet to you is like you know what i've only got 50 shares of it but i'm going to take that five bucks every month all day long right so yep so i i have uh geez i have like 3500 shares <laughs> yeah so you're getting a, a good monthly return on that. That's a nice yeah, little. I, uh, yeah, I have half of it in every at, month, at roll, TD. letting that roll in. Yeah, it, it drips over at TD, and the other half I have over at Well Simple. So I use that uh, to to invest in other stuff. But uh, the yep. stuff at TD, I just let it keep keep on dripping. Nice. I guess we should just briefly mention Well Simple doesn't have uh, automatic drip, so you get your dividends and you can sort of reinvest them however you want. Mm -hmm. Which is what I do. I I love seeing that, and I can you know take my twenty bucks from Rio Can and put it into something else, or I can buy more Rio Can or whatever. Hundred percent. Right? <laughs> yep, for sure. Uh, speaking of Rio Can, any uh, any thoughts on REITs? Yeah, I, I used to hold quite a few, to be honest. I, now I, I only hold uh, one in my TFSA and in my RSP, I hold um, a real estate split corp. So it's, again, another split corp, just like DFN, but what yeah. they hold is are all uh, grade A REITs. So they own the top 10. Uh, they've paid for, I think, the last four years, never missed a beat, 13 cents a month. They're only trading at about uh, thirteen dollars and change now, so it's it's over ten percent yield. 
Yeah. And they just keep paying. They 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 never miss. And and I don't have to buy the individual ones because some of these uh, REITs are quite expensive, right? Like you get granite REIT that's up like sixty seventy dollars. When I can pay thirteen or fourteen dollars and and get a much better yield, and I'm fully diversified, and I don't have to worry that they're not going to pay. Wow, I give that give that yeah, one. It's, it's, it. What's the it's RS? RS is a symbol. RS. I'm you t- real you know, estate. I'm adding that to my watch list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the like, if if you go and you and you watch uh, Adrian's videos, he he shows his entire portfolio and. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Like it, th- this has really opened up my eyes to a different way of uh, of looking at things. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you're opening my eyes too of to look at things differently because there is a way to capture this higher yield mm-hmm. with safely. a lower with a somewhat lower risk. Yeah, safely. Yeah, like I hold another one that's BK, like Split Bank Corp. It's also a split corp. Uh, they've been paying for something like 16 or 17 years, just like DFN. Uh, it it ranges up and down about uh, what their payout is, but in the last uh, year or so, they pay about 16 cents. So their their yield is up like at 17 <laughs> percent, and and they've never missed. They keep paying even in even during COVID. I think they've only missed twice. I think in 17 years. Wow, wow, DK. these are like incredible numbers. Like just. You know, money on top of money. It really yep. is, right? Yeah. And some people would shy away because they get scared. They see 17% yield. They're like, that's not sustainable in any right. way, shape, or form. And and normally, uh, I, I would agree 100%. Uh, I, I'd see a high yield and you want to run the other way. But when yeah. you look deeper at these and you, and, and you really look at what they hold and how long they've been paying without missing, it, it's too hard to pass up. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. It's an amazing way to look at it. And you're right, because like if you saw a company and I'll just take Bell Canada for an example, a Bell Canada, obviously, you know, 100 plus year old company has been paying a dividend for who knows how long, probably 100 yep. plus years. And yep. I don't know what their actual yield is right now, but it's probably in that four to like six, six something. I think it's like yeah, six something. Yeah. Percent. Mm-hmm. But if you saw Bell Canada with 17 percent yield, you would just be like, no, <laughs> right? out. like yeah, I no. wouldn't touch it. I'm not wouldn't doing that. With pool. Yeah, wouldn't even wouldn't even consider it. Exactly, but then I, I hear what you're saying. You're explaining how because these com- these these uh, split corps are investing in a bunch of different uh, companies, and none of yep. those companies are actually paying that seventy percent yield. They're just yep. you know using, I guess, call options and covered calls and anything else to to yep. make that 16 17% uh sustainable. Yeah, like like BK all BK holds is the top 6 banks. Nothing else. That's <laughs> all they hold. Just the top 6. That's it. But yet they pay out everything. Yeah, because there's absolutely no way that the top 6 banks add up to 16 or 17%. Not a chance. Well, you right? got to think, right? If you break it down and you look at uh because all the big banks pay out quarterly, right? So I think they just pull all that money and they, instead of paying it out quarterly, they they pay it out monthly instead. Right. It's it's probably uh e, like a kiff for kiff at the end of the day, but uh the yield just seems seems considerably higher because the share price is so much lower right like the big banks they're all like some of them are north of 100 some of them are like in the 60s 70s mm-hmm. but i'd rather i'd rather pay like 13 dollars and hold them all <laughs> why, why should i pay 100 dollars a share when i could pay 13 dollars a share and, and get a fantastic yield and get a much higher yield yeah yeah and, and with limited risk because h- how could i be risking it's only holds the big six banks <laughs> That's a good way to look at it too. Like th- we know those big six banks. They will obviously not sell. the national bank is number six there, but mm-hmm. we know they're all very profitable com- uh, companies. We we see every quarter where they announce, oh, we just made one point two billion dollars in a quarter, and you're like, what yeah. other company makes one point two billion dollars in a quarter? What other industry does that, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Amazing, amazing. I uh, I guess another sector I like to talk about is energy and right now kind of I guess not really news but sort of among the div twit community sort of Algonquin Power AQN. Mm. Any thoughts on what's going on there? Yeah, I I I've never held it. I I've looked at it multiple times. I know people love it and 
right now people are second guessing. Uh, it, it seems like the CEO and senior management came out and, you know, it, they, they, they're buying shares. So they obviously know things we, we don't know. Uh, if they're buying, uh, I can't imagine it's uh, it's risky. Their their payout ratio has definitely grown. They keep raising the dividend. Uh, I'm not I'm not buying it, but uh, yeah. I, I will continue to look at it. I know lots of people like it. Uh, I think it's a well run company. I I'd do hold stick. it. I do hold a small position, hmm. and you know, for the last couple of weeks now, I've I've looked at it going, oh, do I want to really dollar cost average down on this one, hmm. or? Is there a risk of a dividend cut right now because of what's going on around them? See, and I did have instance, a. Go yeah, ahead. Go. Yeah, I was just going to say, like in this instance, like you can see the uh, the payout ratio going higher and higher, and and I think that's making people nervous. Yeah, I I did have a good uh, tweet reply today. Actually, I had a poll about AQN that I put out last night, saying mm -hmm. basically buy, hold, or sell, and I think it was. Uh, vote willows or at he, it's he's got two accounts i'm not sure which one he responded from at vote willows or at drunk dividends who's been on the podcast mm -hmm. and basically his response was uh their 20 plus hydroelectric dams aren't suddenly worthless just because their stock prices go has gone down by absolutely you know, six or seven yep. or eight dollars right so there's yeah, like I you said they're still a very strong company for sure. And, and it's a vote of confidence. Every time, if you see the CEO buying, uh, that's usually a very good sign. Right, right. Because like you said, usually, hopefully they know something we don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Nor normally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So I guess uh, we'll, I kind of touched on telecoms, but any any uh, thoughts on Bell, TELUS? Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I held I held TELUS for the longest time. I loved it uh, held it forever and and up until probably last year when i started kind of changing around my portfolio and moving over to the to this pi system um but yeah uh i would have no problem holding telus bell both fantastic companies telus is a notorious uh raiser of their dividend they, they they're money making machines they're both they they both print money so uh, right. i i wouldn't i mean canada is such a funny market that there really is only three players so they they kind of have a monopoly on the on the entire market, right? Yeah, they definitely do. And you probably know that we pay like the highest cell phone rates in the entire world. So that's absolutely. Also, I'm sure that's also uh, helping their bottom line at the end of the day. Oh, you know it. Yeah, I've I've traveled in Europe quite a bit, and uh, the rates there. Uh, there's a lot more. There's a lot more players in the market there, but uh, yes, they they pay considerably less than we do here. Right. Right. Yeah. So like as a customer, you hate it. But as an investor, you're like, oh, this is great. <laughs> right. Well, exactly. I, I mean, I think and, and I've seen lots of guys post, oh, I, I make enough in dividends to cover my cell bill or you know, to cover my Internet at home or whatnot. And that and that's great. And that's the, and that's the whole point. Right. It definitely Get is. Definitely is. Yeah, if, if you can. I've even tweeted that before. And I'm actually starting to try to do that where it's like, Okay, I'm going to invest enough in Bell to pay my cell phone bill. I want to invest enough in in Hydro One to pay my hydro bill. I want to yep. invest enough in my bank to pay my mortgage. It'll take a long time for my bank to pay my mortgage for me, but <laughs> you know, slowly start turning that cash register around, right? Yep. Just just b buy a couple of three four thousand more of DFN, and your your mortgage will soon be getting paid. Yeah, that's definitely one way to look at it for sure, for sure. Like I'm like I'm inching up on four four hundred a month from DF, DFN. Yeah, which has to feel great, right? Like just money that that you that they are paying you to not work for them. Yep, exactly. <laughs> you, you got it. And that is Thank the you. beautiful thing of passive income, right? Is these companies that literally pay us to not work for them. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I find it kind of odd sometimes where you see people that don't believe in the dividend strategy, the passive income strategy. It, it yeah, it, it it boggles the mind sometimes. It, it it's this is not complicated, right? It's it's anybody can do it. We should all be doing it. We should be teaching. Like I've taught my son to do it, and he he's he's got a TFSA and a RSP, and he, he's got like he's he just turned twenty three, and he's got like forty k. 
and oh, he had, for him. and wow. I, I taught him how to invest and he invests in stuff now and yep and, and he's got a long runway right he's just a young lad now yeah yeah by the time he gets to my age he'll uh he, he can he can retire long before me <laughs> yeah first you do not look old enough to have a 23 year old son well, the funny thing is, like this mustache and this beard is 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 only because of Movember. Normally, I I, I don't have this on. <laughs> yeah, so but, you probably uh, look even younger without, without yeah. the beard. Yeah, I'm 51, but uh, it's uh, most people think I'm 40. Nice. Oh, good for you. Good for you. Can't complain. Good genes yeah. in the family. I, I'm 49, and most people think I'm 149. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's good good Canadian water. That's what it is. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, another sector I really like, and it's partially because I work in the industry, I work in the food industry, so I really like consumer staples. And, mm -hmm. you know, the number one reason being is everybody has to eat every day. So there's so many great uh, positions in the consumer staples. Any thoughts on on that sector? Yeah, for up until uh, like just a few months ago, I held um, Slate Grocery REIT. Yeah. So they they are strictly in the U.S., but they trade on the Canadian on both markets. Sorry, on New York and in uh, on the TSX. And they, what they do is they hold um, all the big chains in the U.S. So they have I think they have about fifty or hundred. I don't know some crazy large amount of uh, leases they own and. Uh, Great company, great company. Yeah. I, I sold out at the top because uh, once I started seeing, you know, your position go like 15, 20%, you're making, it's it's hard to, you, you have to know when to trim. And right, I think that's right. a, that's the thing where people kind of make a mistake and, and I'm no genius. So I, will, I will tell you that for sure. Um, like I'll just give you a little anecdote here. Like in the in 2017, when during the initial pot stock craze, um, yeah. I, I was right in there, uh, and made well north of six figures. And, um, because I, um, was stupid, I'll just put it, <laughs> put it bluntly. Um, I, I lost a, uh, good majority of that because I didn't, I didn't get out when I should have, like at that point, everybody thought it was going to keep going up and up and up. And eventually the uh, bubble burst and, uh, the, those stocks went back down to pennies but uh, I didn't get out in time and uh, lost a lot of the gains. Yeah, you can't kick yourself for that because as we know, no one can time the market. It's all about timing, yep. uh, time in the market. And for sure. you see things at the top, but you don't know you're at the top. That's the exactly. problem, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Definitely yep. the problem. And Always Slate, thinking the good the good times are going to keep rolling. That's what that's the problem. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and you know, you know, actually, HMMJ, one of those marijuana uh, ETFs, ETFs, I I I honestly fell for a little bit of a year ago. I FOMO'd into it a little bit because it was going up and up and up and up. Mm -hmm. And so I bought it and it went up and up some more and then it didn't. <laughs> right? And yep, like, that's oh. right. And now a year later, I'm like, I wish I had, hadn't bought it at all. But now I'm just going to, I'll just sit on it. And if it goes back up to a break even point great and if not well it's yeah i think you there. might be surprised in the in the new year uh i think if the americans can you know kind of get on board and pass the safe act and you know start uh doing stuff in the marijuana sector which it looks like they want to do uh i think you'll get a nice pop on that guy yeah i i hope so i, I would like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm going back to slate as you as you know, like not just Slate gro Grocery, but there there's so many in that uh, Slate uh, ecosystem mm -hmm. that all look really good. And honestly, I think I've probably I'm pretty sure I have owned some different Slate in the past. Mm -hmm. And not just the grocery. There's so many in that Slate, like I said, ecosystem that are very attractive. They they seem to be very strong uh, positions that do pay those nice dividends nice yields that are in that safe zone of yield where you're looking at okay they're paying a five six seven percent yield not a crazy Nothing 16 crazy. 17 percent yield yep yeah absolutely yeah like ellie montation couche is like a one like a canadian everybody loves it and they're an extremely well-run company 
good dividend, always always growing their dividend, good yield. I don't I don't yeah, I don't so, own it personally, but uh, I know a lot of people do. Yeah, so basically, just like I said, consumer staples. I I really like that sector partially because I'm a little bit biased working in the food industry, but also because. <laughs> Everybody has to eat every day, whether you work in the food industry or or you work in construction or healthcare or whatever else you might work in. You're still Doesn't matter what eat every do. day, right? Yeah, absolutely. We're feeling the pain right now, though. At the grocery store, like prices, oh, I think everybody can tell prices have gone up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So actually, I'm a purchaser in the food industry. And so I, I've literally been sitting at my desk for the last two years watching inflation happen and it's like oh the price of everything is going up it's only a matter of time before this gets to the grocery store shelf so uh yeah basically when when they started talking about it on the news say eight or ten months ago i'm like this isn't news to me <laughs> I, i've yeah, been watching yeah. this unfold for the last literally two years right y yeah you saw it coming <laughs> definitely 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 and i did mention healthcare in there so that's just another sector that uh I'd like to discuss anything in in the healthcare sector that interests you. Uh, I, I I've looked at Pfizer multiple times. Um, never pulled the trigger on it. I, I I like the industry. I think it's uh, I think it's good. I think if I if I did play that, it it would probably be like a HHL, like a ETF or something like that. Like uh, out of Har Harvest has a has a good uh, healthcare ETF that plays uh, not nothing crazy like I think it's seven eight nine percent uh, yield, but they own they own all the like all the all the top twenty uh, big pharma's in the in the U.S. are in there because Canada basically has nothing, right? So you you really have to pay play the uh, the American market. Yeah, I agree. Um, the way I play healthcare in Canada is actually through the REITs, like with NWH mm -hmm. and I have EXE as well. Yeah. Yeah. I owned EXE for a long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> and and my son has NWH. I got him in that and he, he, he has got, he's got that in his portfolio. Yeah. I think NWH is a great play because you're kind of killing two birds with one stone, right? You, you're it, you have that exposure to the healthcare, uh, but you have the, ex you have the REIT. You have the real estate of the healthcare. You have the doctor. You own the doctor's offices, the medical clinics. Yep. I'm sure they probably yep. own some hospitals in there, or the land that the yep, hospital sure. is on, or something like that, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I like NWH. It's it's got killed recently. Like it's it's come down below ten again. So, yeah, I'll, I'll be getting my son to definitely add to add to his position. Yeah, well, and with NWH, I'm not. I'm not looking at that the same way I'm looking at the AQN with my you know strategy of dollar cost averaging down. I'm mm -hmm. looking at that going, oh, fire sale. Oh, let me let me buy more. I just want to buy more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In this case, yeah, that that's one. If I owned it, I would I would certainly be adding more to now. Yeah, definitely. At at these prices, yeah, for sure. Not financial advice. <laughs> Not financial advice. I can. Just the only person I can talking. give advice to is my son. <laughs> yeah. No. Good. Good. Good for you that that you're passing on uh, the knowledge as well, because obviously we talk so much and and you see tweets so much about how financial literacy is not taught in schools and how so many parents do not have the financial literacy to teach their children. Absolutely. So when I have guests on on this podcast on the passive income podcast obviously more of us have more of that financial literacy because we've learned it ourselves you know you and i are around the same age mm -hmm. you know back in the 90s we we went to the library and and got books and read books uh, about investing i like i read the wealthy barber was probably the very first investing book i ever read i'm i'm 100 yep. sure you've read that book as well oh yes yes <laughs> indeed. right well, that uh, well, well, my my college degree is actually in finance. I, I have a I have a college degree in finance, even though I, I never used it for that because uh, I went into high tech. But um, it's it's certainly served me well over the years. And uh, talking about the wealthy barber, that was uh, one of our books to read in year one, <laughs> going way back. Yeah, yeah, back before we had the internet and and we had apps like Wealth Simple on our phones and, and exactly when things weren't nearly as easy as easy as they are today now you just literally press buttons on your phone and you're buying shares and you're getting dividends and 
Well, it's you know, crazy. Like I like you, you probably saw this too, but the dividend dog, he, he's on his cruise right now. He's on the cruise and he, he's he's buying shares while he's enjoying his his cruise. Yeah. <laughs> like it doesn't like honestly, you're right. It does not get any easier to do this than it's never been easier. Right. Uh shout Everybody, out to the dividend you know, dog, another past guest of the passive income podcast. <laughs> so yep. Which again is just showing you how great this is. Uh, this has been, you know, growing and people willing to come on and spend some time with me. I, I just can't thank everyone enough. So yeah, the, yeah, the community is is fantastic. When when I, I started uh, getting into it like a couple of years ago, and uh, everybody is is extremely nice and pumps everybody else up, and and that's the way it should be. There's no, there's no very supportive. There's no bad like no. It, it's just an extremely good community. Yeah. And everybody, like if somebody posts, oh, I've got 50 cents in a dividend, it's like rah, rah, rah. And if somebody posts, I got $500 in a dividend, it's like rah, rah, rah. It's the same whether it's 50 cents or 500, everybody is just happy for everybody else, which is absolutely, which is great because we're all, you know, trying to grow our own, you know, individual portfolios. And uh, as the saying goes, brick by brick, just that, you know, that person posting that 50 cents dividend, everybody knows that. If that person keeps doing that over and over, that 50 cents mm-hmm. is going to turn into that $500 tweet a few years down the road. Precisely. Hey, we all have to start somewhere. And, you know, nobody knows what your income and your expenses are. We're, everybody's got, we're all different. Yeah. And the main thing is that you're investing. That's the bottom line. Yeah. You may have seen my tweet from last night where I was like, just get on. It was obviously a reference to Moneyball. Just get on base. <laughs> just get on base. <laughs> You're not going to hit a grand slam. Don't worry about that. Just get on base. (laughs) Just start. That's the main thing. Just start. Just start. And obviously, the younger you start, the better. So, you know, your son at 23 years old, he's in an incredible position. Like you said, by the time he's our age, he's going to be well set. Needless to say. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. By the time he's 45, 50, if he, even if he never touched it again, he'd have several hundred thousand dollars in there if if you just let it drip whatever's in there now he he he'd be fine yeah so that's a good position for a 23 year old kid to be in for yep, sure indeed and and you know if he if he gets a better job and starts making more money then you know he even better investing more money yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly yep. uh go, just going back to the wealthy barber quickly hmm? probably the number one thing that I took from that book is the pay yourself first concept. And I thought of that just as you're saying, if your son started making more money, you could pay yourself first more money. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. That's, that's something that uh, when I initially read that book really, really stood out to me. And, uh, and I, and I, I've always tried to do that. I mean, once I started making a lot more money than a young lad, uh, certainly do that, uh, do that, uh, have been doing that for the last, long time probably 15 20 years but uh i, th- I think it's t- it's tough when you're first starting out you're young and y- you have a lot of expenses and y- you know you first get married and whatnot you have a children and eats through a lot of your income yeah. but uh, i think once you get to a stable point and y- you can really start putting it away uh it's a good idea to do that definitely i definitely agree with that yeah a couple good points there the younger you start the better the more you can put in the better um, it's going to be tough at first when you are younger, like you said, that you have a mm-hmm. lot of, a lot of bills to pay, a lot of mouths to feed potentially. And so, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, as you grow older, just, just keep, you know, um, socking it away, whether, whether it's 50 bucks out of every paycheck to start when you're 20 years old or, mm-hmm. or 500 bucks out of every paycheck when you're. When you're older, yeah, forty nine years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, you did mention uh, the high tech that you work in high tech, and actually, that's on my list of of sectors as well. So you must have a few thoughts on on the technology sector. Yeah, again, that's one that uh, I, I've never personally owned uh, any, uh, and and again, it, it it's tough in Canada. There's not there's not a lot there's a few high flyers you know over the years like we have shopify and whatnot uh it's been a rough roller coaster ride with that guy and uh a lot of people made tons of money a lot of people lost tons of money so it's 
again, if I was going to play the high tech sector, it, it would definitely be through uh, ETF. Uh, I think I don't, I don't think I'd. Uh, but, but then again, I, I see a lot of people they buy Microsoft and it's done extremely well. But it, but it's very erratic. There's lots of ups and downs, and if you don't have the stomach to uh, to ride that out. Uh, it can be it can be tough and 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 in the in the past they weren't really big dividend payers so I, I kind of shied away from that. Yeah, definitely going with your strategy of you know looking at the higher yields and there obviously there are some great companies in the tech sector like you said Microsoft obviously Apple Google mm -hmm. you can for sure yeah make, Amazon yeah. make your own opinions of of Facebook slash Meta Twitter mm -hmm. and everything else mm -hmm. and and, um, and obviously you know you and I are pretty close to the same age we're old enough to remember you know again going back to the canadian tech like when blackberry blackberries were what iphones are today right like they were yeah, the most popular cell phone they were the kind of the first smartphone right yeah and, uh, so, for and sure. blackberry skyrocketed and, and like you said with shopify a lot of people made a lot of money and then so many people bought at the top and lost a lot of money yep so fall from grace. Yep, for sure. And same, same as you probably remember, like the, the Nortel years too, right? Comp high flyer and then bankrupt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's actually a building here in town that uh, is still called the, well, it's called now called the old Nortel building, but everybody refers to it as the old Nortel building because everybody knew where the Nortel building was, right? <laughs> yeah, like, I, like I've, I've worked in the, like in, here in Ottawa, in our in our uh, Silicon Valley, I'll call it, and that's where all all the all the big players are. And uh, yeah, you, you see you see a lot of these big names. They come and they go. Yeah, like well, again, risk. Ottawa. Remember the the where the Senators play used to be called the Corral Center, and that's right. And where is Corral now? Like, does anyone uh, listening even know what I'm talking about when I say Corral? Well, <laughs> right? that's that's the thing. That's the thing, and and I and I was friends with uh, Michael Copeland's daughter. <laughs> she went to school with me. Oh wow, wow, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. I guess it I, was... I, I should explain now that I've I've left that that, that one. Corel was a. It was called Corel Draw, so it was yep. a, like a predecessor to a Photoshop type program. Well, they they were kind of like the one of the originals that were they were like a competitor to Photoshop. And they and, lost. And, and, and Corel Draw, <laughs> it still exists, and and a lot of people in the uh, industry still, uh, I believe, a lot of people use it in the in the advertising industry. That and Photoshop, they're like the two top players. But you just don't hear of Corel Draw anymore, where Photoshop no. is like the standard. It, it, yeah, well, people say, oh, it got photoshopped, <laughs> <Yeah. It's> like, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> It, yep, it, you know, sure. it's Photoshop has become a verb or or a noun, like obviously it is a noun, but it yep. got photoshopped where maybe they did use Corel Draw, but nobody knows they use Corel Draw because it got photoshopped, right? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Back in the day, it was extremely popular, but uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, here here in Ottawa, where where the uh, actually headquarters was, uh, they don't they don't even have their name on the building anymore. I think I think it doesn't even exist anymore. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't know. I actually didn't know that. That's cool. Um, I am going to just quickly pull your Twitter page up on the screen for those watching on YouTube. You can find Eric on Twitter. And I should know your handle. I know your handle. It's at I love L-U-V underscore the number two underscore travel. Yeah, I love to travel. That <laughs> is abso absolutely true. So definitely uh, give Eric a follow on Twitter. And yeah, so I didn't see any uh, link tree or anything. Do you have anything else going on? Anything else to share out? A, a blog or? No, no. Again, I just recommend that everybody goes on uh, Facebook and looks at the uh, passive income um Passive income investing. Look at that uh, group. He's also got a website uh, that you can see and uh, have a look at that. You might think I'm crazy, but uh, this group I think has, uh, geez, I don't know, fifty thousand followers. So uh, I think it's uh, and he, and he's got he's got a, U a YouTube channel where he's got lots of videos, explains things. He routinely meets with uh, the CEOs of these uh, ETFs that I was talking about. Right. So he he. He definitely 
knows and he, he gets these guests to come on and uh, really explain. And in the, in the videos, they, the, the CEOs, they talk about these covered call strategies and why they do them and how they do them and uh, why they're accretive to the to the yield. So it's not, it doesn't come across crazy. Like I know people see, they see 16% and they freak out and they're like, no, I won't touch it. But right. if you understand it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a different story. Yeah, that's great. No, I'm definitely going to look him up. I'm going to probably find him on on Twitter and bug him to be a guest on the on the Passive Income Podcast. <laughs> yeah, you could for sure ask him to be a guest. I'm sure he'd be more than happy to come on. He he's a very nice guy. Comes across very well. Cool. Him and him cool. and his wife. Yeah, you could probably get them both on together. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'd love to do that. So, mm -hmm. and I was just kind of obviously going to mention that you're definitely you know well into the ETFs and you kind of just touched on that in the last few minutes talking about how people see these 16 percent 15 16 17 percent and you're like most people are looking at that just at the yield alone and going not a chance i i, I don't want anything to do with that mm -hmm. so are, is your the majority of your portfolio now or even all of your portfolio just these etfs focusing on these high yields uh i would say 90 percent I, I still hold a couple of uh, REITs, like uh, uh, Hotel REIT, like HOT.UN, yep. still hold that. Uh, and uh, I think I hold uh, one other one. But at some point, I will um, sell those two. And uh, instead instead of holding those individual ones, I will just uh, continue to buy more RS because it's, it's completely fully diversified. And uh, why not? It, it's yeah, cheap no, and it, it pays a huge yield and they've never missed. What you're doing is an extremely interesting strategy, like high mm -hmm. yield, well diversified and yep. relatively low risk. It, it, it seems like, it seems like yep. what, I, I don't want to say what everybody should be doing, but it seems like, and I don't want to say no brainer. <laughs> no, no, no. Cause with, with, again, with anything, there's always a risk, right? There's always a risk. Of but I, I think this strategy has has li a limited risk. It's not as high as what it when people see 17, they think, oh, that's high risk. But it's not as high risk as you would think, especially once you start looking into the companies and see what they do and see how long they've paid these these dividends. It's it's and and you have to look at the underlying assets, right? Like these are all in the top 20 companies, these are all legitimate players that have been paying dividends and growing their dividend for years and years and years. It's not like some crappy company, right? These are all like right. the main huge companies in each of these industries. Yeah, well, and that's definitely what I noticed in, in the DFN once you once you mm -hmm. kind of turned me on to that one. I was like, oh, they have all the Canadian banks, they have Bell and TELUS, they have Sun Life and Manulife. These yep. are all Yeah, like another one. Like, the most some of the most solid companies in canada right yeah and, and like one of the w main ones that i'm building a huge port a huge position right now is hyld and uh so that's uh etf that holds seven other etfs and and a few of the main ones are the ones in the us like jeppy like you've heard jeppy because our american friends on twitter they that's one they love right yeah it's a huge pair so HYLD in Canada is only it's under it's like twelve dollars and twenty cents around, and they pay fourteen cents a month, and they have a covered call with a bit of with a bit of uh, they have a covered call strategy on top with a bit of leverage, and uh, it's it's a new it's only a new fund I think it's only been around for nine ten eleven months but um, so far so good I'm yeah yeah like yeah 40, fourteen cents on a twelve cent stock so you got to see you got like a 14 40 percent yield. And uh, they and and Adrian there, like he interviewed the CEO a few times, and uh, they truly believe in what they're doing, and uh, they have a extremely well thought out strategy. Yeah! Wow! Amazing. People should Amazing. not be afraid of some of these higher yielding ETFs. They're not as scary as they appear to be. I think that's a great way to put it. They're not as scary as they appear to be. Hmm. Because again, going, I've repeated this, I don't know how many times now in the last uh, 40, 45 minutes is like, people see that high yield and go, oh, <laughs> right? Like that's a scary yeah. high yield. And I even did that even after I bought yeah. into, into DFN I, yep. and I didn't buy very many to start like five or 10. And I'm like, okay, well, 
whatever, you know, seven dollar stock, so ten seventy bucks, big deal, right? Yep. And and even still, I was like, this is, seems scary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This seems like. I, uh, oh yeah, I I researched it heavily before I jumped in with both feet. Like I I, I was skeptical at first for sure, just like everybody would be at these kind of yields but once i really looked into it and like looked at what the underlying stuff was and watched all of his videos and truly believed like i i believe it like he's been doing it for years and his uh his portfolio is uh, over a million dollars and he's making like uh, 11 12 thousand a month on these high yield uh, stocks like he he moved he moved out of canada and moved to uh they live in uh, uruguay so they live in a beautiful, warm climate, and uh, they they live off their uh, they live off their passive income. Well, and it's pretty easy to do if you're making eleven, twelve grand a month in in companies paying you to not work for them. Yeah, so he's got he's got a pretty big portfolio in uh, Canadian dollars, and he's got a pretty sizable portfolio in U.S. dollars, and uh, it's very cheap to live in Uruguay. So that kind of money, you, you kind of you live well. Right. I'm sure you do. And then I want, there's probably also tax benefits as well. I don't, I'm not the tax guy. I have no idea how taxes work. (laughs) Yeah. So all his accounts are in Canada. So you wouldn't really get a Uruguay tax benefit because he's still paying his, his money. His taxation is in, uh, in Canada. Yeah. All his his accounts are in Canada. So he's still dealing with, uh, CRA. You got it. Revenue agency. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> unfortunately yes because we all love the cra <laughs> yes that's where my brother and his wife worked there so i can't i can't see anything bad online <laughs> yeah no <laughs> don't <laughs> awesome no this has been a great conversation i i really appreciated having you on i've really appreciated you spending uh like i said your time with with me to to record an episode of the passive income podcast and yeah, just any any final thoughts before we sign off? No, it's been it's been great. Uh, I, I love, like I was saying before, I love the community. Great people. You're doing a great job. Keep keep it up. Keep getting keep getting lots of uh, other guests on there. I I watch your your episodes when they come out, like a couple of days after they come out. And awesome. uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I've I've told a few people. So hopefully you you'll build up that uh, YouTube uh, list to like a thousand, two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand. That's get what it, we're hoping. And, yeah. Yeah. Get it going. And uh, so with that said, subscribe. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I'm already subscribed, but uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 You're doing good. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I've definitely seen some tweets like that too. Just people saying great content and keep up the good work. And, and those mm-hmm. tweets definitely mean a lot to me. So yeah, it's good you to know, get the message. Thank you for subscribing. And thank you to everyone who is, who has uh, supported the, this launch of the passive income podcast in in like i said just over two months now it's it's been incredible yep keep the passive income posse going join that passive income posse (laughs) by clicking the subscribe (laughs) button below yeah exactly okay thanks eric all right you take care dave okay subscribe okay see ya